You don't know what'll happen tomorrow. Your freedom, confidence, security. Yesterday was certain, but now it's all vanished. Your normal world has shattered. Fear swallows you like a virus. Do not give in to it. Do not fall into despair. Even if the world will never be the same again, even if you cannot change anything, ask Jesus for help. He will protect you. He can give you the hope to overcome fear that no circumstance can take away. To find out how, send us a message. Wow, right, that was a powerful little mini clip, right? Listen, the question this morning, first of all, welcome everybody this morning to the Morning Devo. My name is Brother DJ Sam Rock, Brother Sam Lopez. If this is your first time joining me, this is the Morning Devotional, getting up early. To some, this is not early. To some, this is like midday. I know some people wake up at 4 35, 30 in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning. Listen, I'm on my like 10,000 snore at 5 in the morning. So forgive me if I'm calling this a morning devotional and you're saying, well, this is almost in an afternoon. But God bless you anyway. Welcome to the morning devo. Um, this is my definition of morning time. You know, anything before 12 in my eyes is morning. Amen. So we're here. So God bless you. Thank you for joining me on the morning devo. Who we have here? Sister Mary, God bless you. Good morning. And um, today's question on this morning devotional is this. And it's, it's, a, it's a loaded question. So forgive me, but this is what God woke me up with in the morning. He says, how do you react when you don't feel, in, in quotes, if you don't feel God's presence? How do you react? I'm going to tell you how I reacted when I don't feel God's presence or how I react even so now if I don't feel God's presence. You know, it's 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 serious when you don't feel God's presence. Um, but I'm going to surprise you with a statement I'm going to make and you could agree or disagree. Uh, I don't think you have to feel God every day. I don't think because uh, if you need to feel God every day, then what happens? How do you react when you don't feel his presence? Does that mean God is not there anymore? To an atheist, that might be like, ha, we got you. You don't feel him, so therefore you can't touch him and you can't see him, so how can you believe in him? Well, that's a good question too, right? It seems to be a good question. I already, I already reasoned that out and I already understand that question. So let me give you a minute to share this out. You come back and we're going to go into the Old Testament. We're going to go into the book of Deuteronomy, which is what Jesus himself the Lord and Savior himself quoted to the devil when he was being tempted in his um, fast, 40 days. The devil himself was tempting Jesus and his deity, and he tempted him for 40 days. And God, Jesus, the living word, spoke, quoted Deuteronomy. So it was the last time we quoted Deuteronomy, but we're going to quote it now. So that way you can say, the last time I quoted Deuteronomy was this morning. Amen. We're going to get into it. So let me give you a minute, and I'll be right back. And welcome back to the Morning Devo with your brother DJ Sam Rock. Listen, what, how, how do you react? How do you react, amen, when you don't feel God's presence? I mean, literally, is this something that you wake up and you're like, oh, I don't feel God's presence. I'm all good. So let me keep it moving. Or do you react? Do you respond and be like, wait, something is wrong. 
If you're a Christian, a Christ follower, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, if you believe that Holy Spirit God lives within you and you're not feeling his presence, you know you're going to react a certain way. You're going to be like, what did I do? Because God, God is still there. God is still able. He's still real. He's still true. He's still holy. He's still loving. He's still righteous. He's still just. Amen. He's still love. God is there. He's forever present. God is eternally present. Amen. He knows the past from the future, the future from the past. He is forever present. Amen. So I know it doesn't make really sense to our mindset because God sits out of time. We are temporary beings. God is an eternal being, but he's promised us eternal life. So guess what? We're going to be just like him in a way when it comes to eternity. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 8. Deuteronomy 31 8. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord will personally go ahead of you. He will be with you. He will never, never fail, fail you nor abandon you. Let me say that again. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord will personally go ahead of you. He will be with you. He will never fail you nor abandon you. Soak that in. Because I know right now, there's people right now that feel abandoned, that feel that God failed them. They feel that they failed God. They feel Christianity failed them. They feel the church failed them. They feel like there's no hope. They don't feel the presence of God. They are discouraged. They're walking around in fear. Yeah, there's people right now going through that. And listen, they have their reasons for it. I can't say, hey, you know, just do away with that and keep it moving. I can't. That's disrespectful. You know, there was a time when I was, abandonment is real. Abandonment is a real feeling. It, it, it's it's messed up, abandonment. When I was like around 16, 17 years old, uh, you know, I was one of those kids that went from, got kicked out of the main high school that I was in, and then they gave me a second chance, and then gave me the third chance. So I was at the third chance at this place where you had to, for credits, for school credit, you had to go be an intern and I was living in, in New York. So the internship was in a middle school. I was in high school, but the internship was in a middle school in Midtown Manhattan. Right. I'm young, not saved. So excuse the story. Right. But this is just my story. And there was a 13 year old girl in the middle school, you know, uh, calling on me and saying, hey, let's you know do this, that and the third. And I said, little girl. Um, and in Spanish, back then, I wasn't saved. I said, little girl, you're a sucia. A sucia means like you're a, a, a dirty little girl, you're a nasty little girl. What? She got mad when I said that. She got mad and she said, I'm gonna tell my cousin. And I was the type of guy that said, you could tell your cousin, your grandfather, your mom, your dad, I don't care, I'm here. Um, I'm not from this place, I'm from Brooklyn, blah, blah, blah. And that's the way I was, you know, I was quick quick to speak remember yesterday when i wasn't supposed i was supposed to be slow to speak but i was quick to speak back in the day so she said okay i'm gonna tell my cousin i said you could tell anybody so uh, there's another guy that was um in the internship and he just so happened to be from the borough of brooklyn so i told him let's look, we might have some problems we might have some beef a little bit he says don't worry man i'm with you uh, i'm gonna stay right there with you man we're from brooklyn you know blah 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 just that a third okay Session was over, school bell rang. We stepped outside and there was like 15, 20 guys outside waiting for us. And guess what the guy that told me he's gonna be with me and he's gonna like, to the end, man, we from Brooklyn, don't worry about it, I got your back. Guess what he did? He ran, <laughs> he ran. I felt abandoned right then and there. But how did I react? Listen, I reacted in my mind. I was like, well, I'm gonna get him because he for abandoning me, but right now I have to deal with what's happening right now. And I don't want to share what happened. Well, you know, quickly, you know, they surrounded me. Something happened. I don't know what happened. I know it was God. In hindsight, I know it was God because one of them put a blade, uh, you know, a box cutter to my face. And he was like, yeah, you got a pretty face. You need to apologize to my cousin, whatever, whatever. Long story short, there's no razor blade on my face. That was God's providence. That was his protection. Although I felt like the guy that said he was going to be, you know, with me, he he ran and abandoned me, although that happened. 
And although I didn't know God, but in his presence, I didn't know how to feel his presence. I didn't know about him. I knew about him, but I didn't know him. He protected me, obviously. There's no, like, we used to call that a buck 50 back in the day. Like when you have a slice on your face, that was a gang telling, letting you know, reminding you that, yeah, you violated somebody or somebody they knew or their gang or whatever. And they were leaving a mark on your face with a box cutter. And thank God because of his protection, his hand over me, the prayers of somebody that was praying for me back then and there, protecting me. And for some reason, these 20 guys just left and said, okay, you apologize. We good now. And they just left. Uh, I felt abandoned. So I reacted like, okay, I'm going to deal with this guy later and I have to deal with this situation right now. That's how I react when I feel abandoned humanly. But what happens when you feel like God abandoned you? You walk out into that situation, same scenario, you made a mistake, you called a girl out of their name or a guy out of their name, and now they got a family member to deal with you, older family member, now there's a whole gang outside. Say you're in a scenario, you're a believer, you're a Christian, so he's like, I got God with me. But just remember, you just you have to realize that you abandoned God, God didn't abandon you. You fail God, God didn't fail you. You made a mistake, you sinned against God because you spoke to another human being that's created in the image of God. And you said, look, uh, you're sucia, you know, just like I call that girl. And that wasn't cool. How about if I was a Christian back then? Do you, Is it fair for me to say that when I got out of there, I was surrounded by guys, then I got sliced in my face. Am I supposed to blame God for abandoning me during that situation? Or did I set that up with my own mouth, my own situation, my own actions? And I reacted beforehand. I stepped in front of God by, you know, reacting the way I did to the little girl um, and calling her outside of her name. I don't know, just a question. I don't think we could, at that point, I wouldn't be able to blame God for that if something would have happened if I was a believer. But listen, I wasn't a believer back then. I was young, naive, you know, I was, you know, ready to go, green light. You know, I didn't back down from nobody. That guy that ran away, uh, I, I, don't have, I never got to see him again. He never came back to school because he knew the code back then was that if you say that you're gonna be with somebody, then you leave the situation. If you come back, you're gonna get, you're gonna get in trouble. It's gonna be a problem. <laughs> it's gonna be a problem. God bless you, Sergio. Good morning. Thank you for joining me on the morning Devo, my bro. Pastor Jakes, Satan will use the fact that one does not sense his presence against you trust his word god never abandons his children he's there amen never the scripture says i will never fail you or abandon you god's promise that's his word you know sometimes we got to get to a point where okay god i trust your word let me test the word you say you're not going to fail me not going to abandon me and then you're in a situation trust god that's all i, I could say about that part Amen. Sister Mary says, emotional people make mistakes when they base decisions on how they feel. We need to follow God's will for our life rather than living by our feelings. That's deep. That's tough right there. Yep. Exactly. Emotional people, you know, um, you know, we all have emotions, but if we live on emotions and experiences and times of like, you know, higher thinking, like the shirt says, and we're in a place of higher thinking and we're in a good spot and we react because we're in a good spot. How do you react when you're in a bad spot? That's when we're tested. That's when our faith is tested. That's when we are going to answer and tackle this question. How do you react when you don't feel God's presence? Do you react in a way of like, oh man, uh, okay. And you keep moving or do you react like, wait a minute, I need to feel the presence of the Lord. I'm, I'm on the second part. I need to feel God. I need to know he's there. I know he's there. My mind says he's there. But sometimes your flesh wants a, 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 re, a recheck. Your flesh wants to get, um, how you call it, a confirmation that he's there. Sometimes um, people ask for signs. Okay, God, if this is from you, send me a sign. If it's not from you, send me a sign or whatever. You know, some people have that type of relationship with God. Although that's not the way, you know, God has a relationship with me. But when I feel like he's not there, when I feel like I'm abandoned, there's been times in my life as a believer that I felt abandoned. I felt like, listen, where are you, God? I prayed, I fasted, um, I'm in your word, I'm surrounded by um, your children, and something still is not happening. Something that I need, a miracle, whatever, is still not happening. I felt like he 
fail me, abandon me. What about you? You ever felt that God? And it's a feeling like the sister said. We can't base our trust in God um, based on feelings. What did she say? She said, emotional people make mistakes when they base decisions on how they feel. Listen to that. How, how, if I based my whole <laughs> my whole life on how I felt, uh, I probably wouldn't be a, a believer. So I'd be honest, because I felt like I didn't need God before God saved me. That's how I felt. But was that feeling true? It was true for me, but was it reality to my eternal being? Was it re feeling is temporary? Sometimes I'll feel sad. Sometimes I'll feel happy. But what about when you have that in internal joy, that eternal joy? Amen. That's a different story. Jerry, brother Jerry, what's up, man? God bless you, man. Welcome to the Morning Devo. God bless you, man. So how do you react when you don't feel God's presence? And this is a real question, real people. You know, you have a real God. You have a real person. Amen. You know, how do you feel? How do you react? How do you respond? How about when fear grabs you, like in the video I showed earlier? You feel like you're being gobbled up by fear and emotions. And you feel like no one is there. But then when you trust God, speak his word. You know, the secret sauce that I have. When I feel these feelings start coming, I go to the word and say, God, you said that you will go ahead of me, that you said for me not to be afraid, for me not to be discouraged. So I have to trust in God. He said, you will personally go ahead of me. God, you said you will personally go ahead of me. That means you are there already. I'm walking into a place. I'm walking into a situation that you're already there. So I have to trust God at his word. What about you? How do you react when you don't feel God's presence? And people react differently. Trust me. I've seen people react certain ways. I react a different way. Another person. I even seen pastors and preachers, evangelists, prophets, apostles act certain ways when they feel like God failed them. Why do you think people, they, they say they tried Jesus or they tried Christianity? Why do you think people walk away so easily? because maybe they had an emotional experience or a religious experience with the church or with God. And it didn't work out to, they only gave it like a month, a week, a year, and something in life happened and they didn't know enough for the word. They didn't trust God. They didn't believe in God really, truthfully. They had an emotional experience. And because the emotional high started dying down and life started rising up, they left. And they said, They'll go up to you and say, man, I tried that. I tried I tried being a Christian. I tried church. It didn't work for me. It works for you. It didn't work for me. You ever heard people say that? It's like if they're joining a gym or something. Hey, I have a membership to the gym. Yeah, but you never went. I did that. I was paying, what, $15, $20 a month, and I only went two times in that whole year. And then when I went to go quit, the lady <laughs> right at the desk, I knew, I knew who she was. But she said at the desk, um, you only came like two or three times. I said, thanks. Thanks for letting everybody know that in a year I only visited the, the gym three times and I paid for the whole year. It's crazy, right? Some people react differently. Pastor Jake says, I wrote something in one of my Bibles years ago. Feelings will kill you. We just can't base our life purely on feelings. They will mislead you. Yeah. Feelings is part of the heart, right? And the heart is full of what? The Bible says evil, deceit. You know issues of life that's why god himself comes to guard our hearts and minds amen because that's where the issues of life flow our feelings can cause us to make decisions that are irrational they're wrong they're a little sketchy they're before time you know we're trying to step in front of god instead of letting god step in front of us amen listen i could feel that i'm all that and that'll just be a feeling and people will confirm that i'm not all that but when I see and sense the presence of God, I know that he is all that. And then he'll speak to me. Amen. He'll give a word over my life. And those feelings turn into something in the back burner. What God says is what else? it comes as priority. What God says is priority over my life. So why does God tell you not to be discouraged in this scripture? Remember Deuteronomy, Jesus himself spoke that he quoted Deuteronomy out of his mouth when he was tempted by the devil himself 40 days. Amen. So if Jesus himself quoted 
Old Testament. He's confirming the Old Testament, right? That's number one. He's confirming the words, confirming the law, the prophets, amen, everything. He's confirming it. Why does God tell you not to be discouraged, right? Because sometimes you feel like, I'm done. Sometimes my immediate reaction to when life happens and it doesn't happen good sometimes, I automatically blame myself or I automatically put those um, responsibilities on me. That's weird. I'm not supposed to be going straight to me. I'm supposed to be going straight to God. You know, pray to God, ask God, seek not. Never stop praying. Do those things. Speak to God. Rely on God. Trust in God. You know, when you look through social media, there's prayers, uh, prayer requests all over the place. Please pray for this situation. My daughter, my father, my son, he's sick. She's sick. Um, you know, and these are from pastors. These are from evangelists. These are from believers. And non-believers, people who don't even believe God, ask for prayer. Because sometimes they know or they experience the power of prayer in their life. So they're not dumb. They're like, well, let me let the Christians pray for me. Let me let the people who believe in God pray for me. I did it. Not even wanted to. When our first daughter was born in 1998, uh, we had Christians come and pray for our daughter that was dying. And she she's in heaven right now. She didn't make it past seven. She didn't make it past a year. She only lived seven and a half months. But I saw the power of a praying believer, believers that came to the bedside, prayed for our daughter and how, how everything would just get better and then leave. They would leave. And me and my wife, well, she wasn't my wife at the time. Uh, you know, we didn't really believe like that. We were basing everything on emotions and feelings. We felt, you know, that this was going to be OK, but we didn't believe that it was going to be OK. There's a difference feeling and believing people say. They accuse us Christians of being like, oh, you guys are so emotional. You know, it's all like fabricated. You're just um, wishful thinking and all that other stuff. You know, they accuse us of all of that until it becomes real in their lives. Until God does something in their lives. So they sense the presence of God. I used to always walk around saying, you know, the, the laying of hands and people get slayed and fall out. When I was early in my Christian walk, I said, man, that's phony. That's fake. It ain't never going to happen to me. And guess what happens? God proves me wrong. We're in a big church, uh, hundreds of people. And this lady and her husband, she was a, a preacher and her husband, she was speaking tongues. No lie. She was speaking tongues and her husband would interpret. And that's how they would prophesy over you. Check that out. So I said, I'm going to go up to this line. She was calling people up. I said, I'm going to go up to this line and prove to everybody that when she lays hands on me, I ain't nothing going to happen. There's no power that could knock me down. And I was a young believer. So here she comes. And I started to get nervous because she was coming. Then she came to me, spoke in tongues. Her husband interpreted the tongues, prophesied over me, and it was on point. It was exactly what was going on in my life. Then she laid hands on me. And boy, I didn't just fall in the spirit. I flew across the room. And when I came to... I was like, okay, body. I was telling my body, okay, it's time to get up. Everybody's looking at you, Sam. Get up. Yeah. Spirit of God was saying, you ain't going nowhere. You're going to just feel the power of God. You're slayed right now. Receive the power of God. Receive this. So in my feelings, I was like, I'm embarrassed. Everybody's looking at me now. And then there was a brother in Christ that was, you know, he was saved way before me. And he was looking at me. He was laughing. He says, Hey, Sam, do you believe now? <laughs> and I was like, mm, I truly believe uh, in the power of God's touch. Amen. A feeling that we're accused, Christians are accusing of making it up. Listen, I didn't believe in that that whole um, slate in the spirit thing. I didn't, but I didn't feel that it was true. I didn't feel that it could happen. I didn't feel that it was real. Guess what happened? God proved me wrong. And God proved me wrong in so many things that I thought were right. God proved me wrong. Amen. So... I don't base this whole thing like people think, oh, you're a Christian because you feel, you know, that it's something that's going to, you know, do this for you, do that for you. You know, that's just the way you guys feel, not based on a feeling. Amen. If it was based on feeling, I wouldn't be a Christian. Amen. Sister Mary says, when you can't feel God's presence, don't panic. Acknowledge who he is. Ask God to search your heart. Uh, uh, affirm who you are. Accept your emotions for what they are, allow his word to saturate your heart, mind, and emotions. That's good. That's good. When you don't feel, you see, when you're honest, when we're being honest with one another, 
there's times when we don't feel his presence. Uh, and um, that could be anybody. The Pope, the pastor. It be, sometimes you don't feel God's presence. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you feel God's presence all the time. Isn't it crazy we're supposed to feel his presence every time? He can't get any closer than inside of us. So every single believer who said yes, in Jesus, to ye, yes to Jesus, right? And we call upon his name to be saved, forgiven. Now we have eternal life, Holy Spirit, God living in us. Shouldn't we feel him every single day if he lives inside of us? Not really. Sometimes I don't feel my arm when I wake up and my arm is asleep. Does that mean my arm is not on my body anymore? Sometimes I don't feel my heartbeat and I know it's beating, obviously. Sometimes I don't feel it, right? Sometimes you have to go through your chest and feel your heart rate. My heart is my heart beating? Yes, it's beating. By the way, did you know that you know did you know that your heart was created to beat forever? When God created it to beat forever, you know, if you look at it, it's like a closed system. When I was into um, air conditioning and heating back in New York, um, we called systems called closed systems. That means they circulated and they were designed to circulate by itself. They didn't need any other system to operate. They just needed a pump and water flow and everything. It was a closed system. And that, that, that could really, if you take care of it, it will last forever. But because our heart was created to beat forever, unfortunately, the fall of man, Genesis chapter three, you know, we kind of like shortened that. We did that. God didn't do that. Amen. That's just a side note. Amen. So that's a good point. Thank you, Sister Mary, for sharing. Marissa Torres, God bless you. Amen. Amen. So God doesn't want us to be discouraged because he knows those feelings of discouragement, those feelings of pain, abandonment, those feelings that we get will cause us to go into this place of I don't believe anymore or going to this place of I'm not going to go to church anymore or going to this place of Jesus, where are you? You weren't there. Remember Lazarus, his sisters? They felt like disappointed. They felt a little abandoned. They felt that God failed them, that Jesus failed them because they called out. They sent word and said, look, we need you here. And Jesus said, oh, he's just sleeping. Tell the disciple, we have to do something first. I'll get to Lazarus. But Jesus cried for Lazarus. Right. He, Jesus wept. He gets there on the perfect at the perfect time because he knew he was going to bring Lazarus back to life. But what did the sister say? out of their feelings and out of their emotions. If you had been here two, three days ago, none of this would have happened. You know, one was, you know, one sister was, you know, serving, doing everything. The other one was at Jesus' feet. Amen. One was saying, man, you know, I got to, I got to do all this stuff. I got to do this, that, and the third. And, but now Jesus, you're here. So I know you're going to raise us up all at the resurrection and this, that, and the third. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection. Do you believe in this? Although that you died, do you believe that you will live because you believe in me? I am the resurrection. So the sisters were basing their, you know, they have feelings. They love their brother. They don't want their brother to die. And now they knew that Jesus, the one who was known to raise people from the dead, to do miracles, he was in their presence. So they wanted Jesus to like respond quick. They wanted him like yesterday, the day before. But Jesus came at the exact time, the perfect time, the perfect moment to resurrect something. And they, he resurrected, came to resurrect their brother to show that he has power over life and death. Amen. And we need to realize the same thing. You know, he doesn't want us to be discouraged. He knows, he tells us that he himself, this is like mind blowing. God himself will personally go ahead of you. He will personally go ahead of you. He will personally go ahead of me. Amen. He He's there already. We're walking into situations that God has already been in. Or at so should we be fearing no should we be discouraged no should we base this whole life on um, on emotions I hope not that's how people get into depression that's how people get into panic attacks anxiety that's how people have suicidal thoughts because they, they 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 can't deal with their emotions that's how people go into anger fear so many things that deal with emotions if they if we leave them unchecked our emotions will will become our God actually will become our spirit and we'll be you know, lost. We'll be discouraged. We'll be basing everything on emotion, how we feel. But how do you react when you don't feel God's presence? Amen. How do you respond? God bless you, brother Angel. Amen. Welcome to the morning Devo, my bro. Ego, what's up, bro? God bless. Much, much blessings. Yeah, man. I saw your avatars. <laughs> Looks like you, man. So, yeah. 
So how do you react when you don't feel God's presence? That's something I want you to think about today. Amen. The scripture was Deuteronomy 31 verse 8. Check it out for yourself. Listen, God said, don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. God says, don't fear. So don't fear. I know it sounds easy enough, right? It sounds because I'm just saying it, but let's try it. Let's actually trust God. We don't have to feel, right? We have to have faith. We don't have to see before we believe. We believe before we see because God said it. It's time for us to realize if this is all true, and I believe it is true, God's word, his power, his love, his grace and mercy, if it's really legit, listen, the test is right there. Try it out. Try God. Taste and see that God is good, right? And compare that to anything. Amen. Thank you, Sister Maya. God bless you. And look at your emoji too. Your your uh, your avatar. <laughs> Everybody's doing these avatars. That's cool. Amen. So, you know, yeah. So, let's see. That's Deuteronomy thirty-one eight. Deuteronomy thirty-one eight. That's His word. And listen. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be discouraged. God wants, listen, he's not going to abandon you. He's not going to fail you. We fail God and he still loves us anyway. Amen. God has never failed me. It, if you look at the history of my life before and after Jesus, it seems like there was a lot of failures. God wasn't there. I called upon him. I needed a miracle. I prayed. I fasted. Uh, you know, I'm born again now. So I feel like I even deserved God to respond or I expecting him to respond the way I wanted him to respond. I reacted my way because I didn't feel his presence. When I don't feel God's presence, I know there's something going on with me. It's not that God is not around no more. It's not that God is not present. It's not that God is not real. It's not that God is not holy. It's not that God doesn't love me no more. It's not that God is not real. None of that. It's me. Amen. And sometimes it's you, if you're honest. You know, sometimes it's us getting in the way of what God wants to do in our life. Amen. So I learned to open my hands out when I when I pray, open my hands out, put my hands up and open them. Because if I'm going to God with nothing, amen, um, I'm letting him know, listen, I don't have anything to give. But what I'm going to give right now is my true worship in spirit and truth. I'm going to give my service to you and your kingdom and your people. I'm going to give my love to one another. Amen. And to God first, I'm going to do the best I can in this short time that I have. So that way I know even when I don't feel him, He's still working. Amen. Even when I, I don't I don't see what he's doing, he's still working on my behalf and on your behalf. So that's where I'm at in my life. But Deuteronomy 31 8 is a good scripture to ponder. Make it a prayer, turn it into a prayer. Amen. And it's a morning thing. It's the morning devo right here on the Blaze Morning Devotional with your brother Sam Lopez. So the power of a quarantine disciple. This is the supernatural series. Amen. When you read this, you're walking in the supernatural. When you believe in God, you're walking in the supernatural. When you trust in Jesus, you're walking in the supernatural. So while we're quarantined, listen, I, I chose. It was my decision. Nobody forced me. Nobody told me, you better you know, do morning devotionals. I heard God say, what happened to your morning devos? What happened to your morning devotionals? What happened to you spending the mornings with me? And uh, my answer was like, um, yeah, what happened to that? I really didn't have no excuse. Amen. So I said, I got to do it. And I'm going to allow my friends and family to get get it in too. Let's get this into a holy habit. Why not? It's all good. No problems. Amen. No issues. Amen. So thank you for joining me. Listen, if you were blessed and right now you are blessed, you know, you, you don't need the stimulus checks, but you got them anyway. But you're blessed financially and you're, you are good. You are able. You are extending your hand. Uh, to other ministries. Listen, if that's you and you were blessed and you you see what's going on here and you see it as an opportunity to sow into the ministry, amen. I will really, I will really encourage you to do what God says to do if God is prompting you to sow into this ministry. Good work, my brother. Blessed. Amen. Thank you, um, Pastor Jakes. Amen. If you don't um know who Pastor Jake says you need to connect with him on his Facebook, Michael Jakes. There it is right there. Connect with him, follow him. He has excellent Bible studies, Bible series, um, groups for youth and all this. He has it going on on the live stream. And um, the man of God, he, you can see his integrity, his his um, dedication, you know, his discipline is there. And the word is, is being used. Amen. And he is being used by God to really reach the masses with the word, with the gospel message of the Lord Jesus Christ. So you might want to check them out. Amen. 
um, on, you know, that's my recommendation. Just check them out. But if that's you and you're blessed and you're at a position now, you're like, listen, I could, I could do something. I could help the brother out. I, you can help me help other ministries and help other families. Um, I'm testifying all the time. First of all, thank you for your prayers. Number one, you pray for my family. I'll continually pray for your family. That's number one. Number two, when you sow seed into this ministry, you're actually allowing me to help other ministries and help families. And uh, I'm going to keep on testifying. Thank you for everybody who's been donating and sowing seed. Your seeds are really seeds of eternal life and they're helping situations in real time right now. Some people are expecting stimulus checks. Some people are expecting unemployment checks. Some people are not getting nothing. Amen. And I'm trying to reach those people who are really struggling, who are not getting anything from the government right now, whatever. You know, we need to be the hands and feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm truly believing that you will receive 100 fold blessing in return. It could be with health, relationships, you know, restoration of your marriage it could be a, a child or, a, you know, a parent that, you know, went buck wild and left God. Now they're returning to the Lord. They repented and turning. God will bless you in those type of ways too. Amen. You could give um, your financial donation right there through PayPal. It's very secure. You already know PayPal is like the, the goat of giving right now. And also another secure place is through my cash app. My cash app is very secure as well. Amen. Never had issues with the cash app. So you could give your best seed through my cash app or through the PayPal. Amen. You could always go to the website you see on the bottom right, um, djsandrock.com forward slash donate. Amen. Whatever God, whatever God puts on your heart, amen, to give, give. And the results and the return on investment, amen, that's between you and God. And God is faithful to his word. So you lend, you lend to the poor. Say you want to Put your seed out there for the homeless or for people who are sick in the hospital or, you know, you want to place your donation. You want it straight to a food um, pantry, a family, a specific family. You let me know and I'll direct that. I'll get that donation to these people, to those persons, to those families. Amen. And that means that you're doing that to God's people, to the least, the last, the lost sometimes. And God will reward you. He will pay you back. That's God's word on it. So listen. We're not feeling no certain way. I'm not feeling no certain way if I don't get donations. Amen. And you shouldn't feel any way either if you don't give. But if God is speaking, amen, and he is, he already spoke. He's promised us he would not leave us nor forsake us. He won't abandon us. Amen. He'll be right there with us in every situation. So I'm speaking to those people, that ministry, that business owner, that person, that individual, that independent contractor, whatever you are, whoever you are, God is speaking to you. Just give. And watch the blessing that will return back to you. Amen. That's that's what I believe and that's what I've experienced in my own life. So anyway, I'm out of here. God bless you. Thank you for hanging out with me for the morning Devo. Until the next time, God bless you. God keep you. And remember always that God is good. Peace. Blazing Bible studies.